lecture AP 1.6 and this is about uh, our stoichiometry 5 ditto and how we start using acid base reactions now that we know the definitions we should be able to identify our acid and bases better uh, and therefore know uh, how these play into different types of stoichiometry which is of course based upon mole ratios now not ratios entirely about molecules but in this case important ions that change pH. Any case. So identifying an acid-base reaction is of course starts with identifying an acid and a base. Of course acids generally give off or are written with an H in front, at least the Arrhenius acids are, and an Arrhenius base is written with a hydroxide. And as we go through the year it's going to be much much easier. But what we have to do with these reactions, we have to be able to write net ion reactions. And we started this with an earlier lecture with, with um, uh, solubility. And it's the same idea. So we're going to write a net ion reaction. The first thing to understand is that strong acids, okay, completely dissociate. Okay, so um, to better write this, you'll see this written in your readings, and I assign new readings for this topic, and there's a lot more there than you need. But if I have HA, ha, and it becomes H plus and A negative, you have to know that a strong acid at this point means that all of, every single HA molecule becomes dissociated into these protons and the conjugate base that we've talked about previously. The conjugate base is what's left over. Now, if I've got a weak acid, okay, and let's do another acid that's weak, okay, not all of them or not all of these molecules, in fact, a weak acid, very few actually dissociate. And you have to know the differences here, case in point. HI is a strong acid, okay? And there's several you have to know. Now, I have six here, but we could also make this seven, but six is, is good enough in this case. There's complete dissociation of ions, just like a soluble salt. So a strong acid is defined not by a low pH, by as many, uh, if you have three HAs, okay, and it's a strong acid, okay, you're going to produce, okay, three moles or three H pluses and three conjugate base. Now, what makes it a strong acid is the conjugate base has no ability to re-accept that H plus and go backwards. So a strong acid has conjugate bases that don't ionize water. Okay. Now, if you look at the example of HI, HI if I write over here, that breaks apart, of course, into H plus and I negative. Okay. Now, I negative is part of those halogens, and we know our solubility rules from our fluorine to a chlorine to a bromide. These guys, okay, are very soluble with the exception of F. Now, F is insoluble because it's so small and it's negative, strong Coulombic attractions. So Cl negative, Br negative, these guys are bigger ions with only a charge of negative one, so they have no ability, bounce off, can't do it. They can't accept the proton back, so therefore, they stay, uh, un they stay dissociated, or I should say, uh, they stay as free ions. So a strong acid means its conjugate base is very, very weak, has no ability to reform the acid. That's why a lot of signs see acid-base equilibria. Now, it's very important to understand this. If this HI was a weak acid, you would see a double arrow, meaning as, as fast as HI breaks apart, I negative, I'm sorry, I negative and H plus reform. Okay, and that doesn't happen. We don't write it this way. And if it did do that, we couldn't do stoichiometry. We would need something called equilibrium problems to figure out how much they dissociate. So we're not in that area yet, but we're going to do some stoichiometry because we know a couple of different things. If something is a strong acid, like for instance HI, and I know this is, let's say it's a five molar solution of HI. Well, I can say with pretty strong confidence that I have a five molar solution of I negative. So what am I, what am I getting at here is a strong acid, okay, the concentration of the, of the ions or the, or the concentration of the protons is the same as the concentration of the acid because there's complete dissociation. If we were going to write a pH, okay, pH is the negative log of the H plus ion concentration. Well, all I need is this because this value tells me the pH is 5 molar and I can do a pH. So complete dissociation. Notice I'm using what? Ratios. This is 5. 
this is 5. It's a 1 to 1 to 1. There's complete 1 to 1 to 1 ratio here. Why? Because there's complete dissociation. So understand this. Strong acids and strong bases, we can do stoichiometry because there's complete dissociation. If there wasn't complete dissociation, we couldn't use this 1 to 1 to 1 ratio. We have to figure out how much they separate. And that will take something called equilibrium problems and constants, and we'll get to that later in the year. But right now, we're talking about complete dissociation, whether it's a strong acid or strong base. Let's look at the strong acids for a second. Okay, uh, Hydrogen nitrate, otherwise called nitric acid. Why is it an ick? Because the 8, if you remember, becomes an ick. So this is nitric acid or nitric acid. Notice the conjugate base is the nitrate ion. That's very soluble. Kind of makes sense. Nitrate ions are always soluble. Then if you've got an H with it, that nitrate ion is not going to reform, okay, not going to attach itself back to the proton to reform the acid. Just doesn't. So therefore, the conjugate base is so weak, this is a strong acid. Okay, this is pertrichloric acid, okay, and, and if you look at it, ClO4, okay, same idea. We kind of touched upon the O's and C's. We'll talk more about that. Okay, sulfuric acid, same idea. The um, sulfate ion is very soluble. And of course, we touched upon the nonmetal. So these are your strong acids. You're just going to have to be to know them. Okay, they're the, the six most popular strong acids. Okay, now let's jump down to strong bases. These are easy to remember because um, they're not so as, as arbitrary as these. Okay, I think that these guys make a lot of sense. Even the sulfate one. Okay, the nitrate does. Okay, in that the the, the clitrochloric acid um, certainly. Um, not so clear cut, and we'll talk more about that one. And that one isn't, doesn't really pop up. It's, it's usually the top six ones or the top five here that are the ones you really that, that come up and you have to know as complete dissociators. But through using them through the course, you'll know. Now, strong bases are important because you remember last year or the year where you took uh, chemistry, you had alkali metals, which are group one ions or metals, and you had alkaline earth. Now, these guys are group two metals, alkaline metals. So this is group 2 and group 1 metals on the column on the, on the chemistry. Okay, so really fast, I pulled up magically a Pirac table. And looking at this, okay, we can see there are some definite um, elements here that are group 1 and group 2. This is the group 1 and this is the group 2. Okay, we'll use this one instead. And if you look at this group, this is your alkaline earth metals, I'm sorry, alkali metals, sorry, this is your alkaline earth metals, okay, so these are the ones that become plus one and plus two, they're losing one, or losing two electrons to become stable, we'll talk more about that obviously, but these guys, when bonded, okay, with a hydroxide, okay, are strong bases because they're soluble, okay, soluble, Okay, yeah, I'm good at spelling. The point being is that these groups, group one ions, you learn are soluble. Why? Because they're what? Charges, their densities are too big to be plus one. So they don't attract the hydroxide very strongly. They have a weak coulombic attraction. So therefore, these things completely dissociate into hydroxide. So if you've got sodium hydroxide, lithium hydroxide, because of their solubility, they completely dissociate. And you know why they're completely dissoluble? Because the group 1 ions, they themselves are too darn big for a plus 1. Their charge density is too low to attract this negative ion. So water competes for it, and therefore you produce, okay, this Arrhenius base. And of course, if you have a 5 molar solution of NaOH, you've got a 5 molar solution of ions or hydroxides. It's a one to one to one because of complete dissociation. Very important for a discussion in stoichiometry. Okay, now, so strong bases and strong, of course, if you have the concentration of a strong base, what was that? You have the pH because you have the concentration of the hydroxide. We'll talk about that. But if there's not complete dissociation, then you can't do stoichiometry. So we're living in a world of strong acids or strong bases right now. Now, now I kind of showed you something incorrectly. These make all strong bases, but in truth, okay, I should have really colored, okay, uh, calcium, strontium, and barium. 
Okay, and the reasoning behind that is because these elements here get smaller as you lose electrons. As electrons are emitted, okay, obviously the, the ionic radius gets smaller, okay, and you're negative 2, so your charge density really increases. So if you think about it, as you go down the column, the atomic radii gets bigger. And if you're on top of the column, you really are too small. So beryllium and magnesium are too darn small and negative and po I'm sorry, positive two by losing two electrons to actually uh, ever become soluble. So magnesium hydroxide, notice there's two hydroxides for one magnesium because these guys are all plus two, is not soluble. Therefore, for the same reasoning, beryllium is not. It's too small as you go up. But calcium, strontium, and barium are big enough to become completely soluble but only on very low concentrations. So your strong bases are group 1 ions and your group 2 with the, uh, of course, calcium, strontium, barium, but only on low concentrations. We'll talk about that low concentrations later in the year. And it kind of makes sense why these are completely soluble um, because they got big enough. So their plus 2 is now a little bigger, so their charge density is less so that they can actually give off some hydroxides. But they still have some issues. They're only strong bases under low concentrations like 0 0.01 or 0 0.02 you can't have a one molar concentration of these guys they're, they're too they're too insoluble on those conditions they're completely dissociated on low concentrations so those are your strong bases anything else with a hydroxide as you've learned is insoluble or is a weak base that's important okay so now that we know what's strong and weak based on those different things. Let's do some net ion equations and let's start maybe getting to some actually some questions, okay? So let's clear this all up, make this nice and neat, okay? Net ion equation, we have to consider who's my strong acid and strong base. In this case, I have a strong acid and a strong base. Therefore, they completely dissociate into H pluses, I negatives, K pluses, and hydroxides. Now, water is terrible at dissociating. We know that it does break apart into an H plus and an H, an OH minus called self autoization It does do that. Its KW is 1 times 10 to a negative 14. And as we learned last year, that value, uh, I'm not saying it, that equilibrium constant, okay, is so small, very, very few products are favored. We'll talk more about that. But for this point, water barely does that. So because it mostly stays together and it's not a complete dissociator like the rest of these, we write water as an H2O, okay? It doesn't dissociate. It's not a very good dissociator. Ki is soluble. So you get K plus and I negative. Now what am I going to do? I'm going to cancel out all those things that are on both sides, just spectating. I negative is free here. It's free here. K plus is free here, it's free here. Lo and behold, and pay attention because people get this wrong. If you've got a strong acid, strong base, okay, and okay, you're going to have this overall net ion reaction where H plus plus OH minus makes water. That is definite. Okay, strong acid and strong base will always make the net ion equation H plus OH minus plus water. But I want to make this point very important because so many people think acid and bases reactions always do this, and that is incorrect. Okay, all right, let's move on. All right, now let's go nitric acid and water. Okay, now as I talked about here, you have a hydroxide plus a hydronium makes two waters. Okay, and it's a poor electrolyte. That's the reason why we write water totally undissociated and stays together just like you would if it was a precipitate it's kinda like a precipitate as but it's a liquid that doesn't dissociate so let's go on with something that's not a strong acid and a strong base see what happens here okay so let's go with nitric acid ic is for eight so we have the nitrate ion NO3 minus one therefore you have one H and then you have water now, when I start writing these, I always start with the compounds, and then I have to erase and change over. So nitric acid, well, what's going to happen is it's going to give off an H+. Plus. It's going to act as a Bronson-Lowry acid in this case. Water is going to gain that proton because it has a lone pair, a couple lone pairs, and becomes the hydronium ion, a complex ion. I should say a, a polyatomic ion. And then you have the nitrate ion, which is going to spectate because its conjugate base is too weak, as I've already discussed. 
And that's the overall reaction. Let's see what happens. Well, this really breaks apart, okay, into H plus and NO3 because it's a strong base. I have to write them dissociate. Water, I do not write dissociated because it doesn't break apart, okay? And notice I have NO3 minus here, and I have water, and I have H3O plus here. Okay, well, what cancels? Uh, nothing. So the net ion reaction, okay, is just what I wrote. Nothing cancels. There's no spectators. So it's going to be H plus plus an NO3 minus. Always going to separate that strong acid, strong base, plus a water, plus NO3 minus 1, plus H3O plus. That is a net ion equation. There's no spectators. Okay, let's go on. Now, that was a strong acid. Now I'm going to give you a weak acid. This is vinegar, or as we say below the train tracks, vinegar. Okay, so this is hydroxide ion. This hydroxide ion could, become, could have come from a sodium hydroxide, lithium hydroxide, who knows, but we're going to write it in this way. So, I know that this is a weak acid, and as I, just, as I talked about before, if you're a weak acid or not one of the top six, okay, you do not completely dissociate. You stay together more than you dissociate. That's why you have Ka's that are very small. We'll talk about that. So I don't write this undisso I don't write this dissociated. I have to write it together, undissociated. And I write the hydroxide. This I do not write broken up because it doesn't do a good job. Weak acids barely give off H pluses. Their Kw, their Ka's are very small, 10 to the negative 8 or so. Okay, and for those that don't want to know what Ka is, remember it's products over reactants. It's really the concentration of the products over the reactants at equilibrium. Now, this is not correct. This would be a double arrow. The, the uh, reaction I have above is, is, go, is going one way. You can do stoichiometry here, complete dissociation. This doesn't go, so this is going to go back and forth. Well, I, I, actually I misspoke. Because of the hydroxide here, it's not going to go. It's going to stay one way. Let me explain. Okay, and I, let me just continue with this, and I'll, I'll give you the explanation, as I made a mistake. So what's going to happen, this is a terrible, so this is a weak acid. So it's not going to go off an H. And you might expect, well, there's not much going to go on. But because you have a strong base, and this is the point I'm making here, a strong base is going to force the action. This strong base will yank this electron-deficient H, or semi-electron-deficient H, away from that and make water and the conjugate and of course the conjugate base C at H3 CO2 but now it's negative one okay let's clean this up a little bit so what's my net ion reaction there it is I show my weak acid undissociated okay and what happened was the uh, uh, the weak, or in this case, the strong base, and a hydroxide alone is a strong base. It could have, it could have came from a sodium hydroxide. It doesn't matter. It was strong enough to take and yank away that H. So we forced something that normally wouldn't go. So we could make a what? A one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one, a mole ratio here. So my point being is that we're getting away from equilibrium problems because if I use a strong base in the presence of a weak acid, I can force all of this to, dis to basically dissociate, okay? But I have to write it this way first, all right? So all of that's going to occur, and 100% of all of this will become this, all right? If this wasn't a strong base and I put a weak base here, let's pretend, then I have to go a double arrow. Some of it will go, some of it won't. But what's forcing it to go forward and have directionality is the hydroxide ion, okay? All right, now moving on. Now I have a strong base and a weak acid. Okay, now I'm going to draw them broken apart. Na plus, OH minus. The reason why I'm breaking them apart because they're strong base. This is not a top six acid, so it's a weak acid. So I have to write it undissociated because it doesn't break apart well on its own. Ooh. So this strong base yanks that H away that's semi-electron deficient. We're going to make what we call vasa, or water, and we're going to make the conjugate base of the weak acid present itself in large quantities. 
plus, of course, Na plus. Now, Na plus, all right, is spectating. So I would get rid of it. I would cancel this guy out. And this is my net ion equation. Okay, the net ions. Notice I kept the weak acid together. I separated the strong base. Water doesn't break apart very well. And this should have a negative. Something else I didn't m mention, and I should because I'm being tall, is that the charge on both sides should be the same. Notice this side's negative 1. Notice this side is also negative 1, that negative here. Same idea here. Negative 1 on this side, negative 1 on this side. Okay? So this strong base is forcing the action of the weak acid, okay, to make it one way, directional. So the matter, as long as I have enough of the hydroxide, I'll force every single weak acid to go. And this could be said, all right, with the other way. I have the hydronium ion, which is H3O+, plus, and I have NH3. This is a weak base. It's not a hydroxide. This is a strong acid. This is essentially the um, antithesis of an OH minus, okay? An H plus, these guys are synonymous, so this is a strong base. So in essence, okay, I should write H3O plus broken up, shouldn't I? Yes, I should. Okay, so let's break it up. It's going to break apart into a proton and a water. And what's going to happen? Ammonia is going to accept that H, make the hydronium ion, okay, and we got water left. Who cancels? You got it. Water does. And our net ion reaction, okay, is just H plus, plus ammonia, makes the ammonium ion. Okay, this is a weak base. But this strong acid, as long as I have enough of it, forces this weak base to completely do this. There's no backwards. Complete dissociation. And we can do stoichiometry. Once we know the reaction will completely go and not back up, that backing up is creating a conjugate base that will, can accept the H. But what prevents this is the, the forward action of either the strong acid or the strong base. So... What this lesson is about, we can have complete stoichiometry, no equilibrium, no figuring out if we have to see how much it goes backwards or forwards. If I've got a strong acid, strong base combo, we can do complete stoichiometry. If I have a strong acid and a weak base combo, the strong acid will drive the reaction forward. If I have a weak acid but a strong base, the strong base will drive it forward stoichiometrically completely. It's only when we have a weak acid and a weak base scenario we're going to have to look at equilibrium constants to figure out exactly how much they do dissociate. That's important. So I know I'm getting kind of lengthy here but what do we do with number one? Okay now what volume of nitric acid needs to neutralize a strong base? Okay, what are we doing when we neutralize? When we neutralize, what we're really doing is matching the protons of the acid with the hydroxides of the base, especially if we have a strong acid and a strong base. Now, if you have, if you have these other combinations, these two, it's not going to be just the hydroxide. Okay, you can see from these um, net ion reactions your what the hydroxide is what neutralizing the H from the weak acids so it's not cut and clear H plus and OH minus in other scenarios so what I'm trying to do in this question is I'm trying to match the H pluses with the hydroxides okay so what volume of a certain nitric acid is needed to neutralize so I'm given the liters of a barium hydroxide solution okay so I'm gonna start that way Okay, I have 0.075 liters, and we're going to use our molarity understanding. I'm going to convert this to milliliters, and I know I will do that, but I'll be doing it correctly. Huh, sorry. So we got for every one liter, and we have a thousand milliliters. I know you can do this in your head. 
but I'm just keeping myself organized. Now in milliliters. Well, guess what? I want to go to moles. By the way, this is barium hydroxide. I should write it and make sure I know what I'm doing here, what chemical I have at the time, because we're doing some stoichiometry. We're getting rid of barium hydroxide. Okay, notice it's a strong base, okay? Completely dissociates. Any case, what do we have here? We're going to get rid of the milliliters. Uh, oh, Christmas, what am I doing? I don't have to go to milliliters. Sorry, it's the end of the day. I'm already in liters. Bad Grotsky, good pizza. I want to get rid of the liters, okay, and go to moles. All right, so my liters here, and I want to go to moles. And I'm going to use the molarity formula directly, okay? And it's 0.065 moles for every one liter. Sorry to confuse you. I feel bad, but now I'm over it. Okay, so now I've got moles of barium hydroxide. But what are we really matching? Stoichiometry is when, hey, how much of the acid do I need to match all the protons with the hydroxides? So, here's my work. Now, I have moles of barium hydroxide. Okay, well, guess what? I want to evaluate that in terms of my hydroxides from the strong base. So, I know that for every one barium hydroxide, there is two hydroxides. Keeping that straight in my head because it's easy to make this. Now, I have moles of hydroxide. That's what I really have. And notice something. We're taking our moles of barium hydroxide, we're times them by two. Why? Because there's two hydroxides. This is about these ions, okay? That's what the stoichiometry is about. That's what's a little bit special for acid and bases. All right, well, guess what? I want to convert these hydroxides to protons. So I get rid of my hydroxides. And I know that for one of these, there's one of these. My hydroxides cancel. I'm left with protons. All right, great. I have moles of protons. Okay, that's great, but I want to know what volume. So that's easy enough. I got moles. I want to get rid of moles, so I put moles in the bottom, and I put liter up top. Well, what mole am I going to use? I'm going to use the molarity, okay? This should look eerily or eerily <laughs> familiar to you, even though I can't say the word. Okay, so 0 0.050, okay, our moles cancel. And notice I'm using the molarity, okay, in my acid-base, okay, stoichiometry problem. That's why we go second. We're building upon everything. And we're driving the reaction forward by strong acid, strong base. And now I have a volume, okay, of my H+. plus. Now, actually, we'll go one more step further to make this clearer if you don't get it. Because what if our acid was diprotic? Now, nitric acid, you should know, is HNO3. There's only one H. Just to keep things, you know... Um, understandable and prevent any errors, isn't there one H uh, plus for every one HNO3? It seems might seem cumbersome, but it's so easy to forget when to multiply by two. And now I have liters of HNO3. We'll multiply that through. Okay, found my found my mistake. I didn't feel right about this answer. Uh, clearly. Uh, and you probably saw it, you were screaming at me, this, okay, I said it, but I didn't write it right, end of the day, sorry. So this is, of course, and I started making a confusion, uh, for every one liter, okay, there's 0 0.050 moles. You probably saw that right away, and you couldn't talk to me. Any case, <laughs> all right, still using molarity. Any case, what I get is 0 0.195 liters of what? Of HNO3. Okay. Sorry if you didn't see that. What I'd like for you to do is to do number two. Try this one. Understand what you have. A strong hydro uh, sodium hydroxide. All right. It's, it's a strong base, so it really doesn't matter what the weak acids are. Okay. But they have to be strong acids. So try that for size. All right. Any case, try that one. And... Um, yeah, just try number two. Okay? Thanks. Bye.